So let's let's now turn to the second method here. Uh, the the uh, in 1959, mathematician Abe Sklar uh, produced a very interesting theorem, which said that any joint probability distribution can be decomposed into a set of marginal distributions and a copula that couples the marginal, and that copula contains all the relevance and dependence relationships. Uh, to keep this simple, I'm good, simply going to use the two marginal distributions that we just arrived using method A and focus a little bit here on, on the copula. So uh, the, the, using a copula is very simple. The, the, the bigger challenge is choosing or finding the correct copula. But to use a copula, and I'm, I'm not really going to go through the probability integral transform here, but the, the bottom line is if you sample from a copula, you can sample correlated uh, samples from a uniform distribution, then you plug those into your marginal distribution as shown here, and you get samples of distance and direction, your two variables. It's very, very easy to use if you can get these random samples uh, from your uh, copula, and you can simulate a whole shot dispersion pattern that way. The challenge is picking a copula, and uh, there are a number of classical copulas out there. If you're not familiar with them and you want to learn something about them at a high level, you could look at the Wikipedia article on copulas. This graph is taken from, these graphs are taken from that article. They go by, this is a bivariate student T copula here, and what they're doing is they're plotting the Y1 and the Y2 on the unit square. And you can see the student T copula is correlated in all four corners. Well, that's not probably right for our example. We've got a so-called Clayton copula here that, you know, that looks almost like a shotgun pattern going out. Well, I, I don't know. You know, how would the, the problem is how do you pick a copula? Now there, there are various analytical methods to do it. But in this case, I just wanted to try to be as illustrative and simple as I can and went ahead and derived the copula that corresponds to the method A analysis we just did. And here it is, and the correlation uh, left long, short right, you can see here. Um, and, and really you end up gauging, well, what copula looks, unless you've derived your own copula, which many people do in, in uh, financial industries, particularly quantitative finance. But if you haven't derived your own copula and you're picking among the classical ones, you end up with almost this hunt and peck method of saying, well, what copula does my distribution look like? And that's a lot of guesswork. But overall, this one may look mostly like the bivariate Gaussian copula, except that the you have to reverse the corners here, which can be done with a negative correlation coefficient that... Uh, that uh, approximates it. And if I did that, and I had to cheat a little bit, and I took the shot dispersion pattern and calculated the correlation coefficient associated with that. But if I do that and plug it into the Gaussian copula, I really get with these orange dots, a shot dispersion pattern that's really very much like the, um, the shot dispersion I had um, uh, from using method A. They're, they're really very similar. And I wouldn't be able to, looking at this as a as a both a golfer and a probabilist, I wouldn't be able to tell you that one of these is a lot better than the other. So, so I and 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 the and the copula, by the way, is guaranteed to uh, to honor the exact marginal distributions, including this uh, short long skewness uh, that we've discussed. So the question is, how would that affect your choice of aim point? And the answer, interestingly enough, is if you used method B, uh, the copula method, you'd end up with almost exactly the same aim point. In fact, it's, it's only one yard uh, difference. So my conclusion from all this is that you would basically, if you, know of, if you already know of a copula that you trust and believe in, and it's easy to get the marginal distributions, then you might as well use, metal, uh, you might as well use method B. If you don't, uh, the marginal conditional metalogs where you uh, uh, parameterize the rules or use the rules uh, to come up with your conditional parameters uh, might be a better option. But in any case, you would get a similar answer. 